Radio TV Phono Nut back on again and what we have today is a Ream Caliphone model 1410 tube classroom record player from 1970 you've actually seen this before but today we're going to do a cartridge replacement originally this used an Aesthetic 89T plug-in PowerPoint cartridge which is simply a plug-in integrated needle and cartridge assembly that just slides in this little holder here. When the needle goes bad or when the cartridge goes bad you simply unplug the old unit and plug in a new one and you're good to go. Quick and easy replacement which was ideal for institutional phonographs that often were abused and you know, if you if a kid dropped the tone arm on the record and damaged the cartridge, you didn't have to send the record player out for repair. You could just replace the whole unit. And just unplug the whole unit and put in a new one, and you're back in business. Well, back in those days, the cost of an 89T was probably five or six bucks, about the same cost as what a conventional stylus would cost. In fact up until about 2001 or 2002 I could still buy a static 89T cartridges from the local parts house for something like $5.95 a piece. They always kept them in stock because the local school district was, was buying them. Well, around 2001-2002 the local school district discontinued the use of records and got rid of all of their record players so they were no longer a customer of the local parts house so they stopped carrying the 89T's. Well fast forward to today and the old style 89T cartridges that have an LP needle on one side and a 78 needle on the other side are no longer being made and new old stock ones are rapidly drying up and when they do turn up they're about 25 bucks which is a good bit of money and the disadvantage to that is is when the needle goes bad on the cartridge you're back to spending 25 bucks for a new cartridge where on a conventional style cartridge like this when the needle goes bad you simply replace the needle with one that costs six or seven dollars and you're back in business. Now the only 89T cartridges that are being made today that I know of are either the red single tip LP versions or the green single tip 78 RPM versions both cartridges costing around fifteen to eighteen dollars a piece and when you want to play 78, you have to physically unplug the LP cartridge and slide in the 78 cartridge, which is really a pain in the butt, and you have to spend over $30 for two cartridges. Well, I don't like that idea. I'd rather install something that's more serviceable and, and cheaper to maintain. So I have this Barco TN4B knockoff cartridge that I salvaged out of a BSR record changer that came out of a stereo that I junked and this cartridge looks like a fairly late model so it should still be okay we're going to install this cartridge in this tone arm now the only hitch is is the 89T cartridge kicks out about 1.3 volts where this cartridge only kicks out about 0.5 volts so it will probably be necessary to perform a couple of slight modifications to the amplifier in order to squeeze a little bit more gain out of it. And I will tell you that the tube amplifiers, like what's used in this unit, they're easier to modify than the solid state amps. But anyway, enough babbling. Let me let's get on with this. And I'll also add that this holder is damaged. It doesn't it doesn't detent like it's supposed to so it, it's hard to get it straight and another advantage of using this type of cartridge is with this type of cartridge when you flip from LP to 78 the whole wires move with it 
In fact, on more than a few of these, I've had to re-solder the wires back to the cartridge holder. But on this type of cartridges, on the cartridge, the wire doesn't move. The only thing that moves is the needle. So that will help keep the connection secure. Okay, here we are back together. And that's wide open. And as expected, this one doesn't have as much gain as the original. So let's open it and see what we can do to the amplifier to get a little bit more gain out of it. Okay, here's the 150 ohm cathode resistor for the output tube. Connects between pin 7, which is the cathode, and circuit ground. Some manufacturers have an electrolytic capacitor jumped across this resistor to give the stage a little more gain, but this was not one of those manufacturers. So, of course, with a 1.3 volt cartridge, they probably didn't need the extra gain, so I have a 47 microfarad 50 volt capacitor tacked across this resistor. We'll see if that gives us enough gain. If it doesn't, there's a couple more tricks I can pull out of my hat. Well, that helped a great deal. Okay, I just tacked another 47 microfarad capacitor across the cathode resistor for the, for the driver tube, and that should give that stage a little bit more gain. Now let's see what kind of results we have. Well, that actually gives us too much. So, yeah, that capacitor will have to come out. See, that's the thing with these amplifiers. Often the design varies from one amp to the next, and you just have to experiment to see which modification gives you the best results. And sometimes there's only so much you can do with one. So let's pull that capacitor out and see what else I can come up with. Okay, trick number two is short out the 2.2 mega ohm resistor that's in series with the cartridge to the volume control. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great a great improvement. Okay, here's the resistor. You can see the positive end of the cartridge connects to one end of the resistor. And the other end of the resistor goes over here to the volume control. I just simply put a jumper across this resistor. Now some models have a resistor shunted across the cartridge, which usually ranges anywhere between 220K ohm and 22 meg ohm. In my opinion, 220K is too low. What you can do in sets with the cartridge shunted across the, or the resistor shunted across the cartridge, is just simply increase the resistor value or remove it altogether. Okay, so you've now seen what you can do to these to get a little bit more gain out of them. You can add a cathode bypass capacitor to the output tube. In some cases, you can add a cathode bypass capacitor to the driver tube, but it didn't work too well in this case. Or you can shunt out the shunt across the series resistor on the cartridge input. Or if there was a, or a resistor in parallel with the cartridge, you can either remove it or substitute a higher value resistor. Okay, here we go, and I set the tracking to 5.6 grams. It was originally reading over 10 grams. Okay, that's a 78. And a 45. Oh, gee, how happy I'd be if I could only...